So uh, what does it all mean? What do we do? What's happening right now in the education segment or I would say Pan India? Dr. Chona mentioned about uh, E being the most strongest uh, alphabet. Yes, and I believe she missed a couple of words and one of them was e-commerce. It's the era of e-commerce where uh, I believe majority of the people in the room carries a smart device and what do they do? Somewhere north of 60% people pay their mobile bills online. That's a study by the telecom operators. Electronic electricity bills paid online. Travel bookings, I think uh, last stats mentioned that 72% of the over the air travel bookings are happening online and uh, physical travel agents are in loss of businesses. Income tax return filed online, this is a pretty uh, common phenomenon in the US. Shopping, of course, we know Flipkarts and other giants of the world. Exams conducted online. What about student fees? There was a discussion further, who's the client, whether it's the student, it's the parent. For people who are there in our industry, it's very simple. Education institution are our clients, so there's no confusion. On a personal note, I didn't like the word uh, student being called as a product because um, that, that's what I tell my team also. Don't call your employees or your colleagues as resources. They are the assets to the company. They are not resources or they are not raw materials. So it's a similar thing. I think we are in an era where we should call the students as assets because they are going to become the youth. They are the youth of the country. They are going to become tomorrow people like us. They are going to represent the country going forward. Now I think this is probably 2013 and uh, Dr. Chona had a better number. This is very surprising. Landscape of Indian education market is somewhere around 1.36 million education institutions are there in the country. However, this is a phenomenal number. The question is how many of them transact online? How many of them will be categorized as one of the future schools what Dr. Tripathi just mentioned? Late 2012, early 2013, we did a small market research and uh, we figured out that what were the challenges that these education systems are facing. And it's not, it wasn't a surprise if you ask me honestly. One of the biggest barrier education institution today faces in the country is actually the fees, is the bill payments. Today, they have a lot of challenge in actually collecting the fees. There was a question earlier which talked about money going into real estate, investors making into, you know, giving them funding which is going somewhere or the other, not being accountable. So this is one of the barriers which we took as a challenge and we thought that we'll try to solve this problem. The bottom line remains which aligns with the vision statement of RBI which is creating a cashless economy, which is, we all in the room believe that it's betterment for the future. For people who uh, don't know what is PayU from where I come from, PayU is a group company owned by Naspers. It's a, it's a global group. It's a number one payment company in a lot of countries. And in India, Naspers have uh, a lot of portfolio companies, I believe eight or nine to name some. There's GoIBO, there's Travel Boutique, there's Traders. We have some investments in Flipkart and PayU being one of our uh, payment processor in the country. There are somewhere north of 8,500 uh, e-commerce sites today which use payment gateways by PayU. These are some of the logos you would have seen while making payments. Now coming back to education system, post the research we figured out that what were the challenges? What's going on? Why is, why is collecting fees a major challenge in the country today? I don't remember the exact date, but in 2012, there was two cases filed against one of the top universities in the country. And a poor girl actually fainted standing in the queue, paying her, uh, actually standing in the queue for submitting her admission form for the university. It was so hot that she fainted. A father had to stand for 34 rupees because the accountant didn't have change to actually give it to him and I think he spent somewhere 45 minutes for collecting those 34 rupees. What's going on? Why is this happening? We say that we have grown, we have developed, we are a developing nation, we are in the era of where things are all happening, all of us carrying a smartphone. 
for 34 rupees 45 minutes equation doesn't match similarly a girl fainting for submitting her admission form no i don't think so that's the reality i don't think so that's something which we should be proud of so coming back to challenges long queues huge challenge in education today i remember when i was in school my father used to give me a check or a draft saying that you know what go and get these fees deposited in your school and i used to hate it because it's somewhere you get that 20 minute window of recess or you know your lunch break where you have to play what dr paminder gill was talking about and you have to stand and get your education fees done but that time the time was very different because the credit card penetration in the country was actually very very less but i think we have seen phenomenal growth in that payments received in cash is another very big challenge which we just heard accessing funds it's all manual today the school doesn't come to know if suppose i have deposited a check the person who's the finance controller of the education institution won't come to know what's the status of my check whether it's actually been deposited or not in the bank what is the tat tat stands for turn around time by when it will reach the funds it's all manual and it's a, it's a challenge to take care of all these things hence we invested and we came up with the technology solution we developed a couple of products we overcome these challenges and we are still learning what we actually came up with the product was we completed a absolutely simple technical integration where we have a small integration kit which gets into your school system it's very very simple you just it's a plug and play model and you are and you are, and, and you get a payment gateway post that what we did was we provided a dashboard it's like a fancy dashboard we provided to the finance controller or to the education institution itself where he'll come to know that what is the status of the payments what's happening the other big thing is that today in a corporate world when i and my wife are both working and then who pays our student who who pays our kids fee either she takes a leave or i take a leave or actually i tell my parents you know which is kids grandparents that it's a request can you please go and deposit the check no today we are in an era where we are all living in plastic we have access to credit cards debit cards net banking options less than 2 minutes your fees has been paid we send reminders to the parents so that they don't have to pay late fees which is a co-branded or a, like a customized with the school emailers and sms that you know your fees is due on this and this date why don't you pay it's easy the settlement is extremely easy it doesn't take more than 2 days to actually collect those funds which in the current scenario a school takes 10 days before the funds actually reaches the bank one of the other very big challenges which we faced was that a lot of education institutions especially the ancillary ones or the kindergartens one they didn't had a website they didn't had a website i was also surprised but yes that was the reality of the country a lot of areas a lot of tier 2 tier 3 cities in the country they didn't had a website however they were doing a phenomenal job but because they are so busy in their jobs they didn't find the need to create a website we said don't worry about it we will help you we created a solution for them so there are currently two solutions available one is which talks about which for schools for education institutions who have a website for institutions who don't have a website now these are uh, some of our key clients these are very uh, famous logos you would have seen we are working with them and just not these today i am proud here to say that peju works with somewhere north of 1500 education institutions across india but still this number is marginally less in comparison with the total landscape that we have which is 1.4 million So my request to all of you is that I think it's time to move on. It's time of a technological era. We we just heard a phenomenal session. It's time where we give convenience to our kids, where we give convenience to our parents, irrespective of who the consumer is, who the product is. Right? It's time that we should actually help. It's time we should move to the next phase. So we have taken this challenge personally. we are not going to stop on this number though it's a pretty attractive number with this we we cover somewhere north of 40% market share in the education category itself we are far beyond number 1 in this space but as i said it's still marginal to 1.4 million 
So I, I need a request to all of you that please support us in giving and providing these payment solutions to all these institutions. You are all the part of the ecosystem. We should try to build a better economy. Thank you, gentlemen.